part two of our online shopping cart. What we're going to do in this case is actually set up our instance name. So we need to actually set up what we call each object. At the moment they've come in and they're JPEGs. So we need to actually go to mod modify and we need to convert them to a symbol. Now we can only apply code to things such as buttons and movie clips. So we need to convert all our symbols into movie clips. Remember we do have registration points but at this point in time we want to give them some names and we're going to call it um, like this object sock MC and click OK. Now sock MC if we click up here this is its class name but we need to give it an instance name and it's going to be called MC sock. So each of our objects here we're going to actually convert them into a symbol and in our case a movie clip so this will be rugby MC for its class name and its instance name is going to be MC rugby and for the third object we'll modify convert to symbol and it'll be shirt MC with an instance name of MC shirt now because we've actually got instance names for these objects we can now start assigning code to these so before I do that I'm going to set up my GUI layer and I'm going to lock that I'm also going to create a new layer above and this is going to become my AS3 layer or my ActionScript 3 layer this actually tells other programmers if they come in and look at it what language I'm writing in whereas if you're writing ActionScript 2 you should have an AS2 layer but because in ActionScript 2 code is associated with objects it's a lot harder to track but it's in good practice that you keep your all your code on one layer so in this case here we've actually got an AS2 uh, AS3 layer so I'm going to move in the first thing I'm going to do is put a stop marker into the project you may also want to put your developer comments so in this case here it's such things as like you put your name you would also put things such as a subject so you could put um, year 11 IT or if it's year 12 IT put year 12 IT and then you also probably want to put the date in as well and sometimes what you can do is actually put an overview or before the overview version so it actually can be like one and then you can actually write a brief overview if you wish for the program so this is going to be an online shopping cart so it gives people an idea of what's actually happening okay now when we set up a um, program we normally have to have variables and this is where our global ones will be we also need to set up an area for our functions and then I always put my instance names or my event listeners at the bottom. So I normally find that helps by having global variables at the top and my event listeners at the bottom. Therefore, all my functions are in the middle and I seem to be able to manage them a lot better than having them all over the place. So what we want to do now is actually start adding event listeners to our project. So we've got MC sock. So this sock here, we'll have to unlock the layer to be able to click on it. Just check you got the right name for it. So it's MC sock. So we want to be able to associate MC sock and event listener to it. And then we need to actually say, well, what sort of event are we going to add to it? We're going to add a mouse event. But in particular, what we want to do is set up a click drag. So I can click on the sock move it to a basket and let it go so in this case here I'm gonna put mouse down so we can actually check to see if the mouse and it all needs to be in capital sorry so if the mouse is down we want to start running a program and I'm gonna actually use the shared function in this case and so what we're gonna call the function is on start drag so we're actually going to pass the mouse event to this function so now we need to actually write our function so if I come up into my function area I can actually now write function 
on start drag. And what do we want to pass to it? We want to pass an event to it. In particular, we want to pass the mouse event. And once we pass the mouse event, we're not going to return anything, so we can put void there and click like that. Now, before I start doing anything, I actually want to trace. And you can put more appropriate things like that on start drag. And just make sure that's going to work for us. So when I click down with my mouse, I get a trace out. So my mouse is depressed when I let go. So every time I click on this and hold the mouse down, it runs the function. So now I know that my function call is working. So now I can set up my event. Now we're going to use a bit of a multimedia event, even though we're using a application. I'm going to actually use the event. So what this does is actually passes the mouse event through and what I want to look at is what's happening with the mouse event and with the mouse event I'm going to look at its target so what is it sitting on so the mouse event target I actually want to start drag so I can actually start dragging the object around so this is an inbuilt function or modular code and what we're saying is the mouse event whatever the mouse is sitting on and you've pressed down on in this case MC sop so that is our target MC stop and we want to start the drag so let's see if this is working for us so when I click on this and hold down I can now start dragging now that'll keep moving in this case here you can now see the cropping of objects that's why we mentioned in a previous video about making sure they're cropped correctly so and you can also start seeing a stacking order on the stage as well now the problem is I can't stop that drag I've got to end the program I need to actually set up another function to stop the drag and so what we need to do is come down to our event listeners and I actually want to start a new one so I'm just going to copy this so when the mouse is actually up so I've released it I want to stop the drag so rather than on start drag I want to on stop stop drag so once again I'm going to copy this function here because we know it works well and I'm going to paste that in and on start to stop And rather than uh, event trigger start drag, we want to stop drag. So this now should, when I release the mouse um, up rather than down, so when the mouse goes up, whatever it's targeted, stop the dragging. So let's have a look now. So when the mouse is down, I can move it around. When I release it, it now stops. Now the reason for actually using the event target and on, on start drag and on stop drag is because all these commands can actually be shared by the other objects on the stage. Now we've labeled them all so we've got MC shirt so when this runs now I should be able to pick up my shirt and move it around and let it go I can still move sock around and let it go but I can't move the jumper yet which is rugby. So once again, I'm going to now copy and paste that once more and change that MC rugby. And if all is going well, I can move all the objects around the stage now. So there we go. That's how we can actually set up a drop drag environment. Now what we need to look at in the next video is our collisions.